Hello and welcome back to a tutorial on how to create 2D lightning in Blender 2.8 using the new stroke system. So to begin with, I'm going to create a new file by going to File, New, and then 2D Animation. That should set up our scene. It should be ready to draw straight away, as you can see. However, first things first, I'm just going to go out of draw mode, go to object mode, and I'm going to create two points, two objects for the lightning to arc between. So I'm going to press Shift A, create a cube, drag that cube down to about there, and then I'm going to Press Shift A again and create another cube and drag that one all the way to here. And this is just going to give us um, some spatial awareness as to how our lightning is going to react to the environment. I'm not too fond of the canvas color at the moment, so I'm just going to change that by going into the world settings and changing the color to be something a bit more neutral. So 50% or thereabouts. That should do me. Excellent. So now I can select my stroke again because that's where all the 2D animation takes place. And then I'm going to go back up to object mode and change it out to draw. So with this type of lightning, we're going to start at a point here, for example, and we're going to make it travel and arc and come and get absorbed by this mass here. So let's just create a material and we'll name this new material lightning. And we're just gonna keep it uh, mode as line. Even though line can be a bit jaggedy at times, that's actually what we're kind of going for. So that's why we're gonna keep it as line. If you wanted a, a more smooth line, you would actually change that from line to dots and then just increase the um, subdivisions on them. And then I'm gonna change the color to a very light blue, or you could change it to green if you want. And the great thing is about the system that we're using here is that if you don't like the color of the lightning at the end, you can always go back and change it. However, in saying that, if you're painting a or doing a drawing in Blender at the moment, it's a bit difficult to assign colors, which is why the new 2.81 release is gonna be very, very nice with the well, being able to assign vertex colors to the actual stroke. So let's just test this color, see if it actually looks like lightning. Yeah, I think it does. However, uh, my pressure sensitivity is being taken into account. So I'm just gonna maybe change it to ink. Excellent. And the next thing I'm gonna do is, is I'm also gonna add an effect. So I'm just gonna add a glow. I'm just gonna decrease the radius to about seven pixels. Next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is in object mode, I'm just going to ensure that um, there's gonna be no overlap. So I'm just going to drag this uh, object and just so that it's in front of our 3D objects. Okay, so now we're gonna begin drawing. So back to draw mode. On our first frame, I'm just going to sort of indicate where the lightning is going to originate from. So in this case, it is originating from the center of mass of this cube. And then the next frame, so I'm just going to uh, move over to frame number two. I'm going to create a sort of energetic lightning sort of explosion coming out of here, almost like a gunshot. And we also want to start the arc here. Uh, so when drawing lightning, you can just be as random as you want. Not arc. I'm going to give it sort of like an energetic ball at the um, tip of it. Sort of like a like something you would see in Halo, maybe. Let's just turn on the glow, see what that looks like. Yeah, it looks okay. Now. That's the great thing about lightning, because it's traveling so fast, you really don't have to be neat. 
Now that we have that, I'm just going to sort of align the center again, and I'm going to create these creeping sort of energy blasts that come across the surface of this object here, and then I'm going to progress the actual lightning bolt almost halfway. Uh, this thing travels pretty quickly. And I want to keep it connected for now. Next frame, I'm going to keep it connected again. And this time, the energy ball is just about to hit the other um, 3D object. Let's make it a bit more wild. And just well, there we go keep it connected so it doesn't disconnect from this object until it's hit this object here. Just move these sort of little energetic trails. Keep making sure that the tails are pointing towards the center of action. And then frame five, we have impact. Roughly about here. And then we can sort of gradually uh, taper our energy beam. Then you can taper off these ones as well. So these begin to fade. Like res you have uh, sort of almost like residual uh, parts of the energy fade at different points. So if ever you've seen some slow photography of lightning, you'll notice that it just doesn't disappear all at once. It actually disappears in chunks. So you sort of want to incorporate that idea into your animation. You don't necessarily need to, what's the word? have it 100% accurate, because this is most certainly not. Uh, this is a very stylized uh, interpretation of what lightning looks like and how it reacts. But you definitely do need to keep in mind the general physics of it. And we'll just take that off there. I'm just going to go back and make sure that these start tapering. Oops. These are... Yeah, it's looking okay. And we're just going to now just finish off this taper. Still want to keep the glow sort of in the center. We might even want to spread a few sparks outwards to kind of give it like that outward momentum, like it's exploding. Yeah, that gives it a bit more energy. Yeah, these lines should be a bit more further out, in fact. So I'm just going to fix that up. So you kind of want to give it, see here how my lines sort of come back in, which kind of gives it the sense of an implosion rather than an explosion. Uh, we don't want that. We uh, definitely want an explosion. In this regard, if you want an implosion, you go right ahead. Uh, it's up to you. There we go, just kind of give it that energy. Just so it feels like it's throwing stuff, little particles off of the object that it's hit. And then frame eight, we're sort of left with a centralized 
little area and everything's pretty much faded by this point. Just keep it sort of connected. And there we go. And then just to a point, I think. And then to no point. There. Let's just change the frames to 15 frames so we get a better idea of it. Okay, so it sort of looks like an energy blast from Halo, not lightning just yet. So we want to give the main arc a few um, secondary arcs. So on frames, I'm just going to add whoops, um, secondary arcs. And once it's hit, uh, these secondary arcs are almost going to contract back into itself. So this one here, how it's kind of disconnected, like the way I like to think about it, now this isn't necessarily true, but I think it adds like a nice effect, is that it's sort of being cut off from where the energy is being transferred. So it, it sort of loses its potency. So we kind of get this fading effect. Okay, let's take a look what this looks like with that um, glow. It looks nice. It looks really nice. Now this is where you can get creative with it. You can really create all sorts of really great uh, frame by frame uh, VFX with grease pencils. So if you want to create sort of like a like a gunfight in three D, but then not have to worry about the actual 3D projectiles. You could just draw it in now in 2D. I think it looks it would look fantastic in my opinion because I'm always looking for ways to incorporate 3D into 2D, which is I, I do prefer 2D as a medium. However, 3D's just got so much more uh, freedom in terms of design. Well, like, technically it's the other way around, but what I mean is from a designer's viewpoint, it's a lot easier to design something in 3D and then change it. That's what I meant by that comment. Uh, anyway, now what else could we do to this to sort of give it a bit more flavor? Maybe, well, definitely one thing that we have to do is we have to add a light source in. So I'm just gonna exit draw mode, go into object mode. Uh, and then I'm going to put my 3D cursor there. You can't see it at the moment because of the settings that is applied to our document at the beginning because we started it as a 2D animation. So uh, under this sub menu here, this is just kind of shows you extra stuff. Uh, we really want our 3D cursor to be visible. As you can see, once I press that, it is where I pressed. Uh, so now I can add a light. Just add a point light here. Let me just check it's in the right spot. Yeah, looks like it. And I'm just going to increase the values by maybe 100 watts would do. There we go, that's better. Let's keep that. And let's just. Uh, let's decrease the radius. Where's my custom distance? There we go. My custom distance now. Does it want to come down one meter? There we go. I'm just going to go back into camera. 
increase the radius just to give it a bit of a uh, blur. I think that's good there. Uh, now I'm just going to add in a keyframe. So I'm going to, so nothing's here. So on that frame there, we want it to be about 100. And then on frame one, when there's pretty much nothing, we want it to be about zero. There we go. And then we can decrease it to about zero again here. Kind of give it that um, object interactivity. And then we want to do the exact same on the opposite side. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to actually just duplicate this, drag it over to here. Um, and then I'm just going to actually find that those nodes. And I'm just going to flip them to be frank. Yeah, that should do it. A bit off. Where do we hit? We hit there. So we kind of want to drag this back. There we go. Let's just remove all that. Well, I think it looks pretty okay if I do say so myself. For I mean, we didn't work on it that long. Uh, and there we have it. There's our lightning effect in Blender 2.8 uh, with the stroke system. I hope that I have been informative and that you've learned something and been inspired to do something similar. If you create something using this tutorial, please link it to me uh, via my Twitter at Fowls on Fantasy. I would love to see it. Anywho, if you have any questions in regards to the process or if I didn't cover anything or if you're a bit confused about something, please leave a question in the comments below and I'll be sure to get back to you uh, as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching. This is Hayden Falzon from FalzonFantasy.com signing off.